Hello, everyone, and welcome back to This Week in Guns. It's brought to you by Patriot Patch Company, VZ Grips, Primary Arms, as well as you, our viewers and listeners. This show is the, the show where we offer you commentary. It's about firearms industry, um, information on the news, and, uh, and there's buzzing sounds interspersed. I'm your host, Matthew LaRosier, and I'm here with my special co-host, Othias, from... C ampersand arsenal. No, that's not supposed to talk. <laughs> no, it's n- now you can. You're allowed. Yeah, I'm your. Uh, I'm literally your special co-host. <laughs> uh, Sean died. We'll miss him forever in our hearts. I I am. He's agreed to like do every other week. So I'm okay. trying to convince Othias um, to do the other ones, and in doing so, uh-huh. let's do some listener comments. Okay. Right, let's uh, let's get these up on the. <laughs> On the on the screen here. So first one. Where are these from? Where are these comments from? Uh, various places. So this one's oh, okay. on the YouTube upload. It's from okay. Stubaka117. And he wrote that Othias should become a permanent fixture. This is the first episode I've been in literal tears of laughter with regards to the freedom-loving shit-flinging chimps. And then he refers to, uh, he makes a bunch of references to the show. Mm-hmm. Okay, next one. This is, uh, this is a really good one. Oh, this is from- an email. There's an email which was sent in and <laughs> went through. <laughs> it's actually Sean had to forward this to me, which was really nice. And it's from Mr. Spencer. So we'd like to say hi to you out there, Spencer. Spencer mm-hmm. says, please keep Othias as a host on the show. I was about to give up on it because Matt's nonsense overwhelmed any kind of interesting information <laughs> or discussion that might occasionally pop up. Othias <laughs> seems to keep that mostly in check. I loved how he had to explain the law to Matt, the lawyer. When discussing aspects of the Baldwin shooting, Matt kept trying to make stupid jokes while Othias delivered solid information and kept bringing him back on track. So this was the uh, first of our two recent ones, not yeah. the second then, because I did not help keep you on track on the second one. <laughs> no, in fact, I, I, I still haven't determined whether or not you were intentionally <laughs> derailing me. Um, <laughs> But so, uh, yeah, please, please, please keep Othias as a permanent host. His super factual personality, uh, it's clear he doesn't know you, is the exact opposite of Matt's makes jokes out of everything shtick and makes the show something that's actually worth listening to. I'm extremely factual. This is a really good one. And it's not about you. It's not blowing smoke up your ass, so I, I like it. Uh, this, is about, this is from when we were talking about the magment delayed blowback and you... Right. That you definitely didn't keep us on track there. What was a clearly uh, delayed blowback system? Shut up. Um, so a very efficient one. Token Supreme wrote, "When I train my super red limp rest shooting stance while tightly closing my eyes, I generally scream every time I shoot, thereby creating air pressure against the slide, thus creating highly efficient delayed blowback." <laughs> you have my permission to patent that. You're welcome. <laughs> uh... Unfortunately, Token, you've just published that information and so i cannot patent it but Mm. good innovation i like it and last up uh (laughs) i'll read this from horseman who has a uh profile picture that's it's very similar do you know who that is yeah uh that's me with the plastic pokey hand in my nostril (laughs) okay so it says othias you're my idol please inundate me with your presence do not forsake my following my insanity is your salvation, and you are mine. Please do not forget, love, horseman, panting emoji, Polish flag emoji. That sounds right, yeah. And then horseman replied to his own comment saying, so true, and God, I just want him so bad. Mm-hmm. So. This is normal responses to uh, me at the Barnes & Noble. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I, like, I, I walk in they keep trying to give me lattes and i go no i'm here for books i don't i don't buy any books that just leave. <laughs> so why do you go in to begin with is it uh, to check the magazines for all the people that stole my images this week <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot i know and i'm excited <laughs> uh, <laughs> i might get to play uh <laughs> we've i've gotten to um represent Othias' interest before on his images. He has beautiful images he takes. Yeah. Uh, also, the best audio. And a lot of people might not understand this um, or have even thought about it, but Othias shoots all of these guns and he puts in, you know, in his videos when he does these 50-minute videos, there's like 30 seconds of watchable content, which is the actual shooting part. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
<laughs> he sets up like six microphones and I've watched him do this and it perfectly captures every sound of the firearm. And, uh, and then like, we reduce it down to human hearing range. You know what yes. I mean? Like it's, it's, you actually, it's weird. People really like the sound, but you actually can't hear that sound as a human being. Right. Because it would actually damage your eardrums. But you, I mean, you kind of can if you were right. to stand, you know, 60 yards off. But then you wouldn't hear the minute sounds like the clicking, you know, of the bolt or whatever we're doing. Mm-hmm. And we keep those in as well. So it's this weird hybrid of being close and far away at the same time. And it, it really gives you the sort of the, the correct ambiance for the gun. Right. Yeah. The, like, it's the video game effect almost. Oh, we get, we actually, um, I learned very early on to keep a music track under the audio because they, they literally try to lift that, which yeah. by the way, my audio is copyrightable and I, Use a lot of expensive audio equipment, a lot of expensive ammo to get that sound. And then yep. people are like, can I have that? And you're like, uh, yeah, give me money. License it for you. There's guys that do this as a career, you know what yeah. I mean? Like they go out and capture these sounds. So like, uh, you, you could license it cheaper than you could hire those guys. Like, yeah. uh, in addition to the, to the sound, he has made his own light boxes and he photographs all of these guns. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's been stupid idiot idiot like just Othias has been so stupid that he's published these with his watermark off to the side well yeah uh, it gets in the way of the, video, the image uh, yeah <laughs> but but of course then people naturally go oh you made this <laughs> i made this <laughs> i get that all the time well it wasn't covered with a watermark so it's not copyrighted i'm like yeah. that's not how it works bro like you're you're literally in publishing what are you doing you should yeah know this. <laughs> oh, like, i remember that guy <laughs> yeah it was. It's amazing. We've seen people advertising guns for sale with. And it's like, wait a minute, you don't have that gun for no, sale. I, it's I my gun. Get, I don't get mad when it's like actually transformative. So something that happens often. I know this isn't news, but you guys might find this interesting. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of my own personal firearms or firearms that have been lent to the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like a, one of the bigger collectors we have. A number of his guns have turned up in video games. Like specifically that gun, because what happens is game modelers love our images because we take them from all the different sides and we take them at a fairly high resolution with true color. So uh, game modelers are just like, oh, these are perfect because they can drop them into uh, their 3D software and just sort of clone out the shape. And then they often just go ahead and borrow from the texturing and things. But there's lots of little features that, like, if you if it's a used gun, you know, it's going to have nicks and dings and dangs in certain places. Dang. And so, I mean, there's been a number of titles where, you know, I go to try it out with a friend, and I'm just like, this is literally my gun. Or this <laughs> is literally my buddy John's gun. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, I just, I recognize this gun. This is Wasn't there one in Battlefield? Um, no, I think that was a little too early in the game. Okay. I don't know, but the, oh, uh, God, I can't think of it now. I won't remember the game. There's one recently where they had like a Mosin 1907 carbine and they had misinterpreted a crack in the wood in our photo as an actual notch. And it's <laughs> like, you could tell it was just the yeah. gun from our photo that belongs to a friend of mine. That's so cool. it's just, yeah, it's really funny. Yeah. Well, so anyway, speaking of cool things, you know, who's got cool stuff for sale? Yeah. Hmm. It's a company there online. Matt, uh, are, you the kind of, are you the kind of gentleman that buys cool things? Oh, yeah, yeah easy. Hmm. Look here, right now. We might do it right now. Okay, what do you got? And look, I Whoa. have fifteen minutes to unlock twenty dollars off. That's not a lot of time. Uh, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pass that up. But anyway, primary <laughs> arms. You can save twelve percent site wide with the code save twelve. Let's see what we can save on. Bolt you know, you, you can sign up your friends for uh twenty dollars off by just putting their emails in there. You can that's put the their email. That. That's true. Your friends will love it because they'll get to partake in the deals. They've always got good stuff. Matthias, is there any accessories or anything that you need right now? Let's see if they got it. Um, you know, I need like a bullet button and a bad lever because that's just those are good. You know, patrician taste, right? Yeah. You well, what about a don't tread on me Glock 19 Gen 3? Okay. Wait, where does it say don't tread on me? I'm trying to figure that out, but it says so, right? <laughs> somewhere on there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a be... secret. Oh, there, there oh, it is. Oh, that man. might have been really obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that gets the message right across. You know, let's do, see. do they have like a don't drop me SIG? Do we get that? <laughs> oh, that's kind of a bullet button. Yeah. But look, oh, a Wilson, Wilson Combat, Combat bulletproof magazine release. No. Yep. Who's shooting in the mag release? You never know, man. So let's that's add true. to the cart. Price is too low to advertise. 
$22.99. For Holy Wilson crap. Crabbit, that number is red and the previous number was black. That means it's really good. Right. So, guys, on top of that, let me just tell you. It's a little hack on the site. There's a vulnerability in the back end. Okay. If you put in the code FRN, Foxtrot Romeo November, after you buy a primary arms brand optic, they're going to put a mount in your, in your box. A mount for the optic. Yeah, for the optic. They're going to put it's not a free there. horse. Don't be confused. I mean, that would be cool too. Yeah, I haven't had that happen different. personally, but give it a sh- give it a try. Like I said, it's a back end thing. You know, they haven't figured it out yet. Just my little, you know, my little help to you guys. I'm just trying yeah. to get back. Also, make sure you, you on the on the notation with the order say Matt's Matt's my favorite homeboy. Yeah, say, yeah. Say that. Yeah, say that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> So everyone was complaining last week that okay. we didn't have psychic, you know, future ready <laughs> capabilities. Okay, so here's what's going on, and this is a this is a sticking point for me as well. Uh, the show releases a little bit late. Yeah, <laughs> like, depending on the platform, especially like YouTube. Yeah. Uh, it was like it was a few number of days later. Yep. So yeah, and on the radio, uh, on the podcast, of course, you get it soonest. It's like two or three days after we record. We got all these angry comments saying, why didn't you talk about the shooting? It's like, well, it would have been odd. (laughs) Uh, I feel like I'd be investigated if I knew about it that far ahead of time. (laughs) So that was a thing. But now uh, I feel we have no choice but to talk about that because everything in the damn news related to guns is linking back to that. Um, Uh, Yeah, I have a theory on that, by the way. Do you want to just go with that? No, go ahead and talk. let's talk about it. And then after we've said all the things, I would like to point something out. So it's it's always hard to talk about. And I've always hated this. This has always been a part of my job ever since I got into public po- uh, comms in right. the you know Second Amendment space. Is The times that I would be most requested for media would be right after some insane person killed a bunch of people. Right. Um, quite a few times I've been able to steer the conversation in a positive direction. Like, I think the most important thing to do here is yell at these people for apotheosizing these creatures, right? So, the, yeah, there's a big one because it's like, who is he? Why did he do it? You know? Yeah. What did he write in his live journal? A, like, a, a, very, a very unimportant person has become an important person for violence. Right. And so I, I would always, um, I would just always dump on them for saying, why are you saying his name? What did that get you? Right. What did that like? What did that help? And so that's that's my big thing is, hey, and also like, so let me just tell you, I went on, my old booker called me and he said, hey, I, I need you to take this hit. It's a big, um, and it was like literally that night. He said, you're going to be on the midnight live news in London. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, you're sending me into a knife fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, no, those are banned. Like, you have to be an adult. <laughs> Well, <laughs> they blunt the tips. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I go in and it was actually like fairly, you know, civil because right. it was a, a Brit bong, right? That I was talking to. Mm-hmm. And then finally she's just like, and I'll, I'll try not to be a child. I won't imitate the accent despite desperately wanting to. Mm-hmm. But she asked me, um, you know, over here we see this and it just seems obvious. Get rid of the guns. And I'm like, and she's like, but in, in America, you don't do that. You don't think that way. Why not? And I just go, and I was, I remember in my head, I'm like, is this live or is this going to get cut out? And then I'm like, oh yeah, this is live. And so I just go, I think it's, I also think it's very odd that there are so few societies that remember uh, the, the way that they freed themselves of colonial oppression was by shooting at it. (laughs) <laughs> and, and she just like stares for a second i said I, I mean no offense intended to you our former colonial oppressors that we shot <laughs> with our just, guns yeah and she just goes none taken but this is happening all the time in the united states and so at that point i was like i was like the statistical likelihood is one in 11.6 million for a general adult and like in any mass shooting um and for a school, it's like in order of magnitude less than that. Right. So it's unbelievably unlikely. And she's like, she just hits me back with, right, but 13 kids just died. And it's like, how do you respond to that? And I think I responded wrong. I said, um, uh, I, you know, I said, 
but the largest mass shooting didn't happen here. It happened over there. And she was like, no, no, but it's different. 13 kids just died. And I said, right, in a nation of 300 million people. Right. And then, of course, the answer was, oh, so you got so many, you can afford to lose some? Uh, the problem is the death is something nobody wants to see, especially for someone young. The, the real thing is it's very hard to count the sins that did not happen. Prevention is almost immeasurable. And yet the consequences of a lack of prevention are immeasurable. It goes both ways, right? And so the problem is the people that are going to be supportive of the Second Amendment are going to see it as a bulwark against the uh, erosion of liberty. But that's, that's their number one thing. Mm-hmm. And they're going to say to themselves, I understand that there is a risk for some people, but this is also a preventative for an even greater risk. And then the American motto is supposed to be liberty or death. Mm-hmm. And we like to say it like it's a fun thing to say. Right. It means something. There is risk to liberty. Um, and it doesn't mean that we don't put value on this. It doesn't mean that we don't consider it a complete tragedy. But it's a risk. And I don't think by the time you ever get to the point that you've banned all the guns and removed them and made everybody safe, you will have necessarily given up an immeasurable amount of liberty. No one will turn around and measure it. And then what do you do? And believe me, I hear stories all the time coming out of the UK about little infringements on liberty to them that we would never tolerate. Right. Like, impri- like uh, uh, arresting and imprisoning, trialing and finding comedians. Right. Like, for, and it's, well, the comedy was offensive. They're not a comedian. It's just like, Yeah, it wasn't like, good. It was bad. Jokes. Right. And I get it. You know, what are you going to do? Shoot them when they come to arrest you? No. <laughs> but, you know, we're so busy fighting over this right. It mm-hmm. kind of keeps us ahead of having to fight against all the others. You know what I mean? Like right. erosion happens incrementally over time. And I just, I always want to be at the forefront of saying no to the people that would like to take over my life or the lives of my neighbors. You know? Even if it's for their own good, quote unquote, you're, you're not my mom. Right. Like, now, the real tragedy of all this, though, is that there were security measures that were supposed to be in place. They weren't followed. Um, as usual, these sorts of tragedies are, uh, you know, you can have a malicious actor. But, well, and in both instances, mind, right? Both right. in Uvalde and New York. But that's, by the way, that's a selection bias. So that's For something sure. people don't understand. The fact that this became a tragedy is because there was both, uh, there was both an attacker and an opportunity, mm-hmm. right? And so the defense was not there. The attack was there. The defense was not there. Um, within the same week, I believe we saw a case in which someone pointed a rifle into a crowd and opened fire and a concealed carrier, a woman, shot him dead mm-hmm. immediately. Now, I haven't gone into details on that case because guess what? It's not getting the news cycle. Yeah. I, I, I had to go find it and dig it up and see what the heck's going on. Yeah, we, nobody but, posted that guy's manifesto. But you have to think of it in terms of almost like an evolutionary natural selection kind of thing, right? Like the tragedy that didn't happen. Right didn't make national attention. And then the prevention, like how do you count the number of lives that didn't get lost to that woman concealed carrying? Do we know how many that guy would have gotten? How many he was going for? How do we put, where's our tally? Like there's, right. a, there's trackers for everyone that's died in a gun crime. Where's the tracker for everyone that was saved in a gun defense? Because that's you know? the thing. You can measure exactly the deaths. Right. But the, the lives are the, you know, the flapped wings of the butterfly. It's, it's impossible. So, and they can't, the problem, and I learned this a long time ago, and it was like an eye-opening thing. And this is, um, this is talking to this, I'm going to lose half the audience by saying it, but it, he is what he is. He was a libertarian author, and he was telling me, if you're going to have a discussion with them, and you don't know where they're coming from, you have to ask them this openly, well, why do you think that? Right. And if they can't tell you, you're, there is no point to your discussion. And so, it, so if you are not on the same level, operating in the same, like, forget the ballpark, operating in the same time zone as somebody else, you, you will only be able to scream at each other. And so when we're sitting here saying, hey, think about the unknowable, right? and they just go, but 12 died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, okay, um, okay, have a good day. <laughs> well, to yeah. be fair, though, they're putting on us to solve what is a... right. A co- it is the intersection of a very personal mental problem mm-hmm. and a societal problem. 
like the two things are crossing at that moment when it comes to these shooters, right? Like the, there's, we all tend to, I mean, maybe there's somebody that doesn't, but as far as I know, left and right, as most people I've talked to agree that there is something missing from the, these young men's psyches, especially when it's a young male shooter. There's other, there's been other, that's the other thing is people really forget the other shooters we've had. Right. Like we've had a, a very interesting range of people. And, the, and yes. it allows, by the way, it plays in the hands of the people that are anti because they go, well, the one commonality is the gun. But then they happily forget bombers. They happily forget, you know, trucks and peace. Truck. You, know, like, you, said it. you said it. I know. Like, for me, I, to be fair, like, it's, it's a laughing yeah. stock because they refuse. The reason that meme exists, like, I understand that people want to get mad at me for using it, but I use right. it because the reason that meme even exists is because no one wanted to address that topic in the public sphere out loud. Yep, and so right. it had to be turned into a meme. It had to be megaphoned. I, I personally yeah. think Americans are very kind people. I think they're yes. very friendly people. I think we are the most, and this is an interesting thing, but they, they try to censor this stuff for the sake of diversity, quote unquote, right? But we already are the most diverse. We already have the neighbors, the friends, the family. Mm -hmm. We're actually very diverse. Right. I don't. I think the artificial forcing of diversity, this sort of like, mandatory mental integration thing that they're doing is is making people sick of something that they were already happy to do right it's almost like it's made you resent a thing that you were already doing naturally for the most part i understand there's always outliers but you're going to expend all this energy to get these this little five percent or less of people and you're going to burn out everybody else on the way there and it's right just, it's insanity. Yeah, they're not going for the and the, the pro-gun side isn't either they're not going for the fence sitters they're screaming and shaking their saber violently at the fringes. Right. Like, there is a fertile ground. There is a lukewarm nugget center. You know, I'm not going to say it to the extent that you know, Nixon thought there was, right? But there is, <laughs> they, you know, there is a lukewarm center of the country that is, is not quite sure. And they are going to go with the people who are the most reasonable and not only reasonable, but approachable. And um, friendly, right? Just to be honest. And we do a bad job of the last two on our side. Um, it's, it, it's, it's wildly problematic. Uh, to be fair, we let the opposition frame the conversation. All, for sure. We're, always we're already doing it now. You and I are doing it to the extent that we're sitting here debating the merits of how many deaths there are and what liberty costs and blah, blah, blah. And the answer is we prefer liberty. Right. Liberty is costly and we prefer it. And, and this is a right and we're sticking to it. Yeah. It, it, and, you know, I'm a first generation American. This right. is something that was really um, ingrained into me by my parents. And it, it's funny. I've, I've known some other civil rights lawyers uh, who will, <laughs> they'll be asked, like, oh, what do you do? Uh, it's like, oh, like any other immigrant, I do uh, what uh, is they were immigrants. Yeah. I do the jobs Americans don't want to take. I protect our <laughs> constitutional. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, the, and the interesting thing is, so of course we know that they, they focus on the gun. And it's because, and you know what, I'm not being unreasonable here. I'm not being, um, you know, I'm not presuming the other side has no merit because I've tried desperately. Like I've, I made it my personal mission for three years to not think a single negative thing about the anti-gun side to go to their events. Like I was going and I was having lunch with these people for three years and I was suspending all disbelief. And you know what conclusion I came to? Huh. It's a fetishization. These people have a proto-sexual fixation on firearms and they just hate them. To and be fair, like, I think that might be true of the people that are actually doing the advocacy. Right. Like the which were the people are, I was the, the tip of the spear, right? Yeah. But I would say for the most part, I'm very sympathetic to the ones that are just sort of generically anti. You know, for my sure. mother wasn't big into them, you know, that kind of thing. And I think for them, most people I've encountered that are not a fan of guns, they wake up telling themselves, not actively, but sort of passively, that the world that they live in is safe. Right. That, that if they get in the car and put on their seatbelt and drive down the road, then they shouldn't be in the car accident. That they, but, and then next thing you know, and I mean, I'm sure there's people listening that have had loved ones just torn away from them by mm -hmm. frankly bullshit. Right. Like just some, somebody not paying attention, someone texting or something breaking loose on some, I mean, there's guys that just a, a car tire comes off, it flies there, hits a dude in the head on a motorcycle, kills him. Right. Yep. Or a fucking deer. 
Right. Like, <laughs> and, and the thing is, like, we're in, we're in a society that is almost entirely artificially constructed by human beings. And when human beings screw up, people die. And if a human being becomes screwed up and lashes out, people can die. And I think there's something about the gun being, being, you know, to most people being viewed as a weapon, right? They don't even think about target or anything else, but they see it as a weapon. And because of that role, that sort of natural tie to, to it being a representation of death Mm -hmm. and that it's something that someone else has and they don't have because a lot of them aren't gun owners. That's why they're on that side. That is a, that's something that, that by its very existence, and your awareness of it puts a hole right in that artificial right. sense of security. Like it, it, it tugs at your sense of I'm okay. You know, well, it does something else too. Mm. Uh, and on multiple avenues, these people who are content and, and believe, right. They're suspended in this, in this bubble of yeah. security. The gun also makes forces them to confront with the, idea that they might have to do something right and a lot of these people and you know i've met a lot of people who are converts to you know the pro-gun side right were had anti-guns positions because they had intrusive thoughts like they had you know they would have the the idea you know they'd have bad thoughts come into their head of right, right, right. hurting people or, or whatever and they'd they, be like they, they i were can't have a weapon of- they were afraid of their own lack of self-control. Exactly. And they're just right. thinking, I can't have a weapon. And since I'm like this, obviously, you know, everyone else is. And it's like, yes, everyone has intrusive thoughts. But if you're a ordinary person, you don't tend to act on them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, I, I feel like there's a lot of that in it. And especially like, the other thing between the fixation on the firearm and then the identitarian politics that go into this, you know, they find their snake. And like you said, they always attack white men. And you know what? Hey, I heavily implied it. I didn't say it. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, well, I just said it. They always go after white men. Or at least that's the banner that they wave. They do. They keep saying it's white men who are doing all these things. And so a couple of years ago when they were really saying this, I was like, is it? I'm going to check. And I took all of the spree killers that had killed more than four people. Right. They put them into a big spreadsheet. And you know, I went through like news clippings and stuff to find some of the races, like the ones that they talked about in the sixties. Right. Like you didn't know, I had to like go find out what um, race they were. And if there were you photos, know, you had to hold up the paint swatch. And, like, yeah. I had the brown paper bag. Uh, but you know what I found? Hmm. They exactly represented the population with one exception. That they were male. Well, uh, no, for, for race. Oh, I'm sorry. With one exception on race. What's that? And that was an extreme over-representation of Asians just because Asians are such a small percentage of the population and there was two, so it's just a sample error. Okay. Um, so it was like, but everything else perfectly matched the racial demogra- demographics of the country. Right. It was a male thing, though. Right? It was overwhelmingly male. That's very interesting uh, for a couple reasons. Because mm-hmm. even if it matches the racial aspect of America, the gun ownership rate doesn't match the racial aspect of America. Or at least the reported gun ownership rate. Yeah. So does that mean there's more gun owners than we think? Because I guarantee you, a lot of them probably were carrying in states that required registries that didn't have them or things like that. Because a lot of them are criminals overall, too. That's the other thing is they throw in every gang shooting, you know? Right. And you're like, this is a symptom of a totally different problem. It's just that this is the implement, you know? Right. I like to make the example, you know, back in the day, they banned switchblade knives uh, because of all the gang problems with them. So then all the Italian gangs switched over to guns. Like, whoops. <laughs> like, unintended like consequence. The, uh, we escalated the fight when we didn't give them switchblades. Like, and same thing with the Gun Control Act, mm-hmm. where, you know, uh, in 1967, what was the cheapest gun you could buy? An Italian made 25 auto. In right. 1969, what was the cheapest gun you could buy? A 380. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, no, to be fair, like, you know, they joke about the high point nine millimeters, right? Yeah. If it weren't for these weird importation bans and other things that sort of targeted the smaller cartridge guns because they were concealable or whatever. Right. I mean, you'd be more likely to get mugged with something that was less likely to kill you. It was, like, oh, and the incidences, and we researched this as well, the incidences of lethality in penetrating gunshot wounds doubled. No. Doubled. No, because it was, because 25 auto was like the caliber of, of choice for criminals. Because guess what? It was the cheapest thing you could get. 
the cheapest well, and most available thing. It was also the most concealable too, which is For what sure. they targeted, right? Right. So the idea was like, what are you gonna carry like a like a Luger on you? That's a big <laughs> yeah. gun because that's what a nine millimeter was. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, think of like nine millimeters from that era. They're bigger guns. But right. what is the and industry, massively like, what, disgustingly expensive? Right. So what does the market do? The market market rallies around the larger caliber, the larger gun, and just finds a way to shrink it. Right. Like they, they, we're going to duck it. We're going to duck it. We're going to duck it. And when all the if all the guns are banned, we're going to pick the next most lethal thing and we're going to throw it in our pocket. <laughs> like it's because we're we're riding out a very long cultural wave of personal protection. So I don't know. I'm no, sorry. We are way... existed since like ever. Like you see, there's writings about. Uh, there's there's self defense scholars from 1600s France right. when like immediately after the king of England sought to disarm all of his subjects and it's like there's French scholars saying how could you possibly ever do that that's ridiculous you know <laughs> and then <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, I don't know it, it's a very interesting conundrum yeah. Um, I think I just well, it's not a, it's not a conundrum. It's not. It's and and I think the other no, it, it is in it is in a macro sense. So the, the problem is you have this society, and the society must constantly choose freedom. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, it can absolutely fall victim to a handful of safety peddlers who promise everything will be all right if you just give me the reins. Yeah. Like give give me more authority, and I will fix it. Yeah. That's never a good bargain. Like, think of, on the very basics of it, think of every, if you guys are, like, the kind that listen to, like, TV show histories or something like that, if you have, if you kind of consume uh, stories about old uh, music artists or the country music mm-hmm. industry or something like that, go back and refresh your mind on every story in which someone said to some pop star to be, don't worry, I got the contracts under control, I signed the papers, you play the music, we got it. Right. It never goes to the benefit of that person. <laughs> like, Here's another example for the younger viewers. Anytime you've been playing a video game online and somebody asks for admin, administrator privileges, and then gets it, what happens? <laughs> Every Discord mod ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who... And that's like, we bo- in both of our Discords, we have a thing. If somebody asks for mod, they can't have it. Right. No, the guys that want it. <laughs> Yeah, guys it's that like, want it are gonna shit it out. There, there was a comedian that's like his his kid was in the Boy Scouts, and he's like, you never want the guy that's way too eager to take the kids into the woods to be the one that takes the kids into the woods. <laughs> like, you know, like, I want the guy that's like me. God damn. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's like that's that's how we should pick our presidents. It should be the person who like runs fastest and screams <laughs> loudest when you say you're the president. <laughs> You'd be like, no, that's, come on. Come on. <laughs> but uh, oh, so, man. all right, that's us getting the initial stuff out of the way. Let's talk about what's going on in the headlines on the subject. Of course, this big one, and we hear it every freaking time that there's a school-involved situation. People on the right will sit there and tell you to harden up the schools, put more cops there. I mean, Rob Pincus, God bless him. Why don't we just start building schools around police stations? Oh, God. Oh, God. And, and, so, and like, oh. we got, uh, the like, so... Biden's press secretary went out and said, no, the president doesn't believe in making schools harder. This is something I, for once, I agree with him. Probably not for the reasons that he's stating it. But then the Daily Caller comes up and says, Joe Biden doesn't believe in making schools more secure? (sighs) It's like, yeah, you know what'll make our students act more normal? Let's make the weird government prisons we lock them in look more like prisons. (laughs) You know what? It would be fine except for the example we have literally from this week, as far as I understand it. You know, uh, you know, just just a little demarcation there. I've read the notes for what happened in this shooting in Uvalde. Um, and to my knowledge, the way it's worded, it's not... By the way, they don't write this stuff clear enough to be 100% certain. I don't know for why sure. they don't. Yeah. It looks like he entered the building through a door that was left open by a teacher who not only saw him crash, but also saw him open fire. And thought, I'll just leave this door propped open and leave. But it seems to be. I could be wrong, but as last I saw, that's what I heard, right? So the problem is when you make a hardened point, like these school things where it's like armor the doors, armor the whatever, make it funnel everything into these corridors that are you know, exponentially long with no corners or you know, right. it, I mean they're structured like I'm sorry, man, they're structured they, like galley. Like I went to a high school, you would have had a hard time hitting two people. 
It was an open campus high school and they demolished it at, you know, a couple of years after I graduated. Mm-hmm. And then they built this hardened prison giant complex, which I get it. It's hard to get in, but man, the minute you're in there, you're in, they can't get you out. You know yeah. what I mean? Now you're on, now you're the defender. And I think that may have been what happened here. If you read the notes, it looks like they came across a door and then just couldn't find a way to breach it while under fire. And I know people are really mad at the uh, police on this one. And I don't know how it's going to shake out. I, I literally don't. But I would be very curious to see what kind of door that was before mm-hmm. I start judging them too harshly. Because at some point, it's like... If it was glass or not. Yeah, like, if it's if it's this, like... If it's high visibility but hard to penetrate, unless right. they have a shield, unless they have, a, like, a grappling hook to grab the knob and rip it off, I don't know. What <laughs> we could do? You know what I mean? If this is a school that was built around the... Well, there might be a shooter in the corridor, so we're going to build this armored door on every classroom. Right. You know, because I can think of some like government building doors that I, you could give me 30 men. And if I'm under fire, I can't really get through it. And that's going to be really unpopular with people because they want everybody to be super aggressive about getting in there. And that's room for a hero. Don't get me wrong. But just the logistics of trying to get through it. It could have been simple or it could have been very hard. We literally don't know. No one has shown me a picture of this door. Right. I'm surprised that it's not on the move because like that seems to be the crux of this whole argument is this stupid door. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. I have a slightly different opinion of like, I think if we're going to hold them to this ordinary person standard, that's fine. Right. No more pensions. Like that. That's fine. <laughs> fine. No, that's okay. No more pension. Yeah. But because you're not taking, if it's, if pension it's is that- because guess what? Something goes wrong. You die. Right. That's what pensions for. The and I'm sorry. It's like, the, it's the, not about get home safe. It's about something goes wrong. You die. You give your life to try to save people. No, no, no. My whole point isn't that they shouldn't be willing to take risks. My right. whole point is that it might literally be impossible to do. Like, there's... we In we an effective a, way. You, you hear yeah. these stories about firefighters where, like, one goes in, they can't mm-hmm. get them out. The second one goes in, they can't get them out. And then after you get to 13 firefighters, you're kind of like, okay, guys, stop sending firefighters. Yeah, yeah that's, there's only two you know, guys in there. <laughs> there. You could literally have that scenario it's at possible. that door, depending on the door. But the, the problem is nobody... Everybody's so ready to be mad. And right. I still, well, I I have, we haven't seen the layout of the school, right? I mean, like, I, I literally have no opinion on whether this was done properly or improperly. My hunch is that it's way too much time, like everybody's yeah. saying. My That's hunch, my issue is the amount my, of time. Yeah. My hypothetical is that there must have been another way to get in there faster. Okay. My hypothetical is that something went deeply. Like going around to, through some yeah. access corridor. Strategically, but how do they leadership. Know? Yeah. In terms of strategy or leadership, something yeah. went wrong. I, right. I am very willing to believe. But again, people really hate gray area. They want to feel like they know something right now. Right. I no, for sure. And like that's that's what's frustrating and, about public policy. And I, is that it's know, all my, nuance. Our friend that's in the police, he's saying to us that most police are, are ashamed of it, that they think they should have gone in, that they would have done more. Again, though, I haven't seen the corner. I haven't seen the door. I literally right. don't know what the situation was. Um and there's there's a point at which you can actually like there are no win scenarios where you're just losing more. So I just I would like to know more before I speak out. I don't want to sit here and condemn somebody without knowing. But this is the problem. Everybody wants to make their call on our side, on their right. side. Every, everyone wants to call make their call without knowing what the heck's going on. So here we have the media crying out that we need to armor the schools when we literally don't know if the armor of the school. Yeah, made this it may be because the school was so armored. Right. <laughs> like, and I'll and I'll just say I went to. So the high school that I went to was freshly made when I went there, literally made by the contractor that does prisons in the county. <laughs> yeah. like, like not even, no, not an exaggeration. And then I was passing by, like up on the inside of the county. I was like, oh, that looks just like, oh. And then it's mm-hmm. a correctional facility, right? And it looked exactly like my school. And you know what? I, I never thought about it, but there were hallways, just like you said, with the steel doors, with the small glass windows. Right. No corners, just straight, you know, with the doors right on the edges. Oh, and they'll cinder block the heck out of the walls. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you never know what you're looking at. So I just, I, I don't know what happened in there. I literally don't know if armoring the school would be better or worse. I do know having a resource officer at points of entry and exit, right, could theoretically help. But in this case, from what I read in the notes, the biggest thing would have been is, if the teacher had closed that dang door, like, and then what training do you do to tell a grown adult, hey, if somebody's running at the school with a gun, firing at people, because apparently that he'd fired at some people that were outside before. Yeah, he'd he like in. started going. Yeah. 
Uh, no. How do you tell a teacher that's the time to close the door? You know, like who doesn't, and I get it, panic, whatever, but what training could you probably, like, you Something can do everything in the world happened. and somebody leaves a door open. And apparently the resource officer that was there, I heard, was sent after the wrong person at first. And so he didn't even see the shooter at first. He saw someone else. And mm-hmm. so it became this whole quagmire, right? Right. Just a ghost show. Yeah. So I don't know. What is, okay. Our and then the school. problem, the other problem, like, and look, thank God these incidences are so rare. Like right. they don't, they're statistical anomalies, anomalies. They are rounding errors. Of course, they're not rounding errors to the people they happen to. To the people they happen to, they're horrifying life ending and destroying events for their whole families. But they are so rare. And, and it's just a little dishonest to, in my opinion, it's a little dishonest to be willing to destroy so much in order to try to bend the very, very fringe of criminal activity. Um, and like this is, again, on that British news show, the woman said, gun violence is the like, number one cause of death in young children. And I was like, yes, because medicine is good. Like, and of course, there, there's some caveat to that, but it is. I was going to say, what, I thought it was swimming pools. It, it is. The, it's like there's some caveat word um, where it used to, uh, of like non-tortious. Uh, oh, it is tortious. It's criminal. Um, uh, I, I don't. There's some caveat, and it's like they, they have these bar graphs, and the bar graphs are accurate. And you know why it is? Because guess what? We can now diagnose diabetic kids early. We can now diagnose all kinds of other um, you know, autoimmune and um, uh, the point being is, nutritional it's a beautiful, issues. It is, it is a beautiful society where the, thing, the only thing that's likely to kill you in childhood is the malicious interference of someone else. And it's and the it, it's like one of the more likely things to kill you, and it's like one in a hundred million. Right. That's a pretty slick society to live in. Right. That would be like it, to me. That's the same as it's like. Oh, well, what should I be worried most about today? If you step outside, there might be a comet. Right. Like that's. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn, this is great. <laughs> and by the way, there's ways to mitigate the risk. Like we can have a whole conversation about what security measures work and don't, and you know we can. Or hey, let's it. stop locking kids in prisons. Let's I mean, maybe it's like I started homeschool. It, it's like I started to say I was on open campus. There's no way you could have cornered more than right. like. I mean, if you really got a classroom cornered, well, they could have bailed the windows down. I think the windows open yeah. at my school. So like you know, there's no you could there'd been so much flight. You know, you couldn't right. hold down thirty people for thirty minutes where I went to school. Right. But then I guess more people could get in somehow easier. Like it's weird. It's like which way does it count? Does it yeah. has anybody even done a study of this or do we just run our mouths and take guesses and start well, we just and then keep... let the contractors bid on building prisons? <sighs> I think I think the problem is we're suffering from a sort of cultural no child left behind policy for where sure. it's like we want to try to build the entire society around uh, containing the worst possible actors. Mm-hmm. And not only does that not really work as much as we hope, it's almost like a centrally planned economy thing. It's like, how, sure. do, you, how do you plan an entire society around preventing evil? And I'll then, tell you how. The president's got a plan. Oh, okay. Let's, get, let's okay. do that. So, you know, you know who was really good at dealing with this? Okay. Uh, them, the upside down people, the Australians. Oh, okay. And so, he met with uh, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, asked for their guidance. Oh. Okay. I can't imagine what they would say. Well, it, it's because, look, the issue is gun control and online extremism. So, mm-hmm. you know, Biden was there. He was praising... Did the Australia Minister. have a lot of online extremism? Well, there? the president praised her for making progress on climate change, mm. combating violent extremism online, and gun control. Um, one of these things is not like the other, by the way. <laughs> Two of, I mean, I none of these things like, are like the other. This is like... <laughs> no, because, I mean, if you're... Okay, if, you're yeah, okay. if, 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 if government actors are convincing you to do things online, then I would call that online violence. But, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, listen, climate change, if everybody wasn't so hot... They wouldn't right. be getting mad. Yeah, that guy was really pissed at the weather, and that's how this all started. <laughs> if he had had, like, cool, breezy shorts, you know, none of this would have been a problem. Right. Yeah. And that's the, that's the great thing, is the, the targeting online extremism or whatever, and it's like, oh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the guns, and if we can't have that, can we just spy a little more? Can we just watch a little closer? 
It never works though. Like they are. They, by the way, all we by the, for all this, all that they've expanded this observation. Right, we constantly hear about these departments to check on this. Blah blah blah. We want more um, red flag laws and blah, blah blah blah. And they dial it up a little bit every time. And then what do we do? So authorities knew that he had threatened the school sixteen times for the past six weeks and did nothing. Like every time, did nothing. Because ultimately, if, if I have to say, like the one thing that if you if you're really looking to violate somebody's liberty on this issue, mm-hmm. um, you're going to have to expand conservatorship. Like if you want to prevent this stuff, that's where you need to be having an argument about liberty versus government. Is how do you lock up a loony, right? Literally, that's no a very hard country. question. It is a hard question, but it's not even being debated because they're so right. fixated on the the instrument of damage, right? No one brought it up during this shooting and the shooting before. No one brought it up during the um, the uh, uh, my brain just locked up the the truck murders. You know what I mean? Mm. Like running people down with a truck. They don't talk about it either. Like they don't talk about what like we like. It's really weird, but we used to have you know institutions for people. Mm-hmm. They were not well run. They did not always uh, honor people's rights. I went to law however, school in a former one. However, they seem to have been more effective than gun control for what awful things they were doing. So if we're talking about doing awful things to the population. Why isn't this in other, why, why is nothing else on the table? Is what I'm So saying. I don't I'm not saying do I always it. Hate I'm it. just saying we no, don't for even sure. have you, you know what I'm talking about like yeah. we're, if, in other words I'm kind of pointing out the fact that we're we're really locked onto something that is um, a target of opportunity. For sure. It's not, they don't, I don't think they think it's the root cause either. I think they just go, oh, we can use this to beat them over the head about this thing we were already concerned about. Yeah. Hey, I wanted that. Maybe I can have that now. Right. Because there's no, there's not a lot of political movement around the idea of bringing back loony bins, right? Like there's not, there's not a whole, there's, there's no party with that as a platform. Yeah. And so guess what? It doesn't come up, you know? Yeah. It's well, not, so it, I, I do think that it, it does come up, right? And it's usually the right wing way of deflecting off of gun control is saying, we got to we got to lock these people up or you know we got to make sure that they you know get involuntarily institutionalized or stuff like that and it's right. like oh so you're going to tell people that hey if you show any signs of cracking uh you'll be locked in a cage right. against your will that's going to make them come seek help it's no, like, there, no there's no one there who's saying like that's that's exactly why people don't prefer red flag laws on our side right. because they go well hold on you'll never know that this guy's coming you right. know what i mean but to be honest with you, we're going to run into the problem that the only predictor for violence is violence. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's if anything, that's what we should be targeting. We should be targeting sign, like actual uh, incidents, not signs, incidents of violent behavior. That is going to be your biggest predictor of future violence, is that they have committed violence. Yeah. Right. It's a seal that, like, once you break it, it's hard to close yeah. back up. Yeah. It is fairly accurate. It's one of the few... It is the strongest leading indicator. You know, violence against animals is a direct predictor of violence against people. You know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So start there. But is anybody talking about that? No. Right. Like, it's even where you could get some common ground on it. It's just not a political hot button. It's only possible. Like you said, it's only possible to use as a deflection. Right. Which, by the way, is not to say that we should be talking about it. Again, I know right. that's where people go with this. What I'm trying to say is, again, it points out that this this topic is being locked onto for a very specific reason above and beyond solving this problem. Yep. yep. And it's terrible. And it's frustrating to watch the debate never change. I, I just, you know, I feel like the political left in the United States could seize on such huge horns to say, you know what? People you know, value their rights. There's, we clearly have a problem. We need to make sure that people feel secure in seeking mental health and then expanding privacy laws. Right. Right. And just working openly to try to encourage people to, to seek mental health. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've always been a huge proponent of this because I always do think that, um, for a lot of these guys, if they had been medicated, they probably, and you know, and you can feel however you want about that, audience members. I know a lot of people are very much against mental oh, there's, drugs. I mean, there's a lot of argument that a lot of them were medicated, and that was the problem. Well, like, but it's know. we have it's like it's the whole system of um of, of psychiatry in the United States is so busted 
because it's this like weird like knife to your back relationship that you have with your shrink where at any point they would screw they could screw you at any point they could like so you kind of have to do whatever they want and then they have these relationships with the pharmaceutical companies because the government creates strange incentives for all of these things it's like it's it's all just fundamentally busted so the short here's my is, solution get rid of is, the fda uh legalize literally everything and uh Everyone could just all there will be too much competition that you know we'll be get, importing these drugs from everywhere, so no one's going to be getting bought out. They'll give you the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, who knows? Like the problem is, I really everybody focuses on mental health, like it's this thing that you just sort of fix or don't fix medically. Yeah, I really don't think that's what we're seeing. I, I really think we're seeing we're seeing a horrible tumultuous mix of expectations and reality i think uh, i don't know this much about this young man i don't know that much about the previous shooters but i'm going to tell you whenever it gets down to their story it feels like almost all of them were told by not just parents or teachers or uh you know friends they were also marketed to that you're supposed to do all of these impossible things as a person like as a young man you're supposed to be all these things at once. You're supposed to be handsome and cool. You're supposed to be whatever, right? And then you're also supposed to be talented and you're supposed to have a stiff upper lip and you're supposed to blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I'm not talking about just toxic masculinity thing either. I'm talking about you're supposed to own a cool car and do wheelies and you're supposed to right. have flashy clothes and you're supposed to get women and you're supposed like. Well, and act- on top of that, everything that's wrong in this world is because of you. Exactly. So you're, you're already on, you're ahead of me there because it, exactly it's this mixed messaging of there's no future for you. You're a piece of garbage. Mm-hmm. Also, you have to be all these c- cool things to be a cool guy. Right. Uh, why don't women like you? They like us. Everybody on Instagram's getting laid, right? right. Not you. Constantly. And, then, um, por- I, and I don't want to be like, I'm not being prudish by this. I'm, I'm being l- 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 quite direct. There's pornography everywhere, which tells them that other people are having better relationships than they are. They don't, they don't judge it as pornography. They judge right. it as reality. And so, and by the way, it might even not be porn. I'm just making these examples. The world, this sort of virtualized world, this marketing world right. is so wonderful. And why aren't you carpe diem and blah, but you know what I mean? And then when they go out and try to do any of this stuff, they get shut down for being a pervert, for being an idiot, for being, or they're, they're already prejudged to be dangerous or whatever. Right. And so they're constantly frustrated in every direction. And the messaging is so mixed. I'm not surprised that most of them are, honestly, most of them are just lonely. And they're every lonely, once in a- they have, they feel they have no economic future. They feel they have no opportunity. You know, they've, then they feel that there's no place for them because it's just like you said, you keep getting told, well, your, your, your kind is so rich and so cool and so powerful. So, you know, you get all the best jobs. And so you're not going to get a job. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, that's, I mean, that can be targeted to male. That can be targeted yeah. to white. That can be targeted to white, right. right? But then we know that it's not all white males either. So I think it really is just this idea that you have to be everything in everything. order to get anything. Yeah. And then also the minute you try and make a mistake, you're a monster. Oh, yeah. I mean, you and I are old enough to remember awkward first dates and things mm-hmm. like that when we were younger. Could you imagine? I can imagine. In the culture now, you'd be yeah. labeled a, I mean, you'd be labeled like a. Everything. A, yeah. I mean, just any, any accidental microaggression or micro right. rape, I guess. I don't know what you'd call it, right? The, 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 the band, the success band for these guys is so narrow. And I don't know about you and me. I know easily a dozen men in their 20s that have no hope of dating because they just have no, there's no cultural milestones, mile markers for how to date anymore right. other than somewhere between Instagram bragging and pornography. And that's right. like all that, you know what I mean? And it's like, they're, they're, they're trying hard. You know, they're nice guys. Right. Little, and not nice guys. They're nice yeah, yeah. guys. They're good right. people. Yeah. And if they didn't have, if they, if they didn't have good, like if they didn't have mothers and fathers, if they didn't have family, if they didn't have someone to talk to, I'm not saying that I know any of them would break, but I can say you wouldn't have to get too far down the line to find somebody that would break. Right. Because there's just, once your parents aren't there or your parents are allowing this to kind of spiral, nothing else is going to catch you. Not really. Not the way we got it structured. We don't have it structured to catch them. There's no we net. Don't. 
No, there's no rails. There's no there's no expected path oh, for them. Even the freaking Boy Scouts are gone. Well, the rails that we laid down yeah. don't go anywhere. They go mm-hmm. into knots. You know what I mean? There used to be this thing that you laid down and people could follow it and they'd come out fairly successful. At the end. Right. You know, they don't have to be wealthy, but they sure wouldn't be lonely, broke and helpless, you know. But if you try to follow the rails as they're laid out now, they kind of lead in random weird directions, you know. They lead to student loan debt and no career. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what does that mean? It's, it's terrible. It, Sorry, it, I, I know this is a little... Well, we have, like, we have deep needs that are ingrained into us biomechanically, right? We're, we're flesh computers that are based on a thousands-of-year-old design. No, no we're, we're social creatures. Well, Our, yeah, and, and... Evolutionarily, we are social creatures. And so there's certain needs that we have... And yet this, I don't know what the hell it is, this reptilian system, it like, it has to be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a person of belief. I view it as satanic. It has to be, it's either satanic or just a bunch of really vile people that have intentionally set this out where just you, the expectations, especially for young men are completely opposite of your needs and your reality. So just like you said, you're fed pornography on Instagram, and, and that is what it is. I 100% agree with you, right? Yeah. It's stuff that is designed to appeal purely to the prurient interest. Yeah. And yet, and at the same time, it's if you even look at that girl, right? Look at her raw. In real life. You're out. You're over forever. Yeah. And then it's like... I mean, God help you to compliment somebody on their appearance. Oh, my God. And it, it happened to me recently. Um, not that recent. I was just like, I, I just complimented, like... It was a, a like a piece of jewelry, right? And uh, and like you know, growing up, that was a thing that people just did, and everyone was flattered. And it, this was a Yankee that I was in Pennsylvania, uh, and uh, <laughs> they looked at me like I had shot their dog because you complimented their parents. Yes, and uh, and then the on the other side, and I don't know what the hell is causing this. I, like, there's this huge trend where um, women are putting in their dating profiles. Here's what I expect. And it's like they're copy pasting it. It's from a TikTok thing. <laughs> it's like, and there's three things. No, I, I oh, shit honey. you not. You can look this up. You can Google these things. It's number one, don't worry, babe. I've got the bill. Number two, uh, let me get the door for you. And number three, um, I made reservations for us at, uh, at whatever, be ready by seven. And it's like, I know it's not intentionally evil. But no. when you throw that on top of the pile of what these people are dealing with, that's just like, because, you know, what, what are these young guys, they're, they don't have any money. They don't have like, are, the ability. We are to, having the boomer conversation. Just I think, no, we're, I think we're, we're old, old enough now where it's the, the millennial conversation. Yeah, it's true, actually. Because we old got millennials to, got hit both ways. Like, I got, I, I got to start dating before we all had cell phones. Okay? Right. So that was, it was. A salvation. Way better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have to call women and talk to their dad to get them on the phone. That was always <laughs> devastating. <though. laughs> now it's the boomer comedy. Yeah, that, yeah. But anyway, uh, it's, so we have a sick society. We do. Um, I think the only thing we can really do is lead by example and encourage No, they, each it's other not just leading strong. by example. I think everybody out there, if you have young men in your life, and young women too, like the problem right. is we're men. We're not that good at... Also, okay, I want to point something out. This is totally, now we're getting down the rabbit hole for a second. So right, be, I'll try to be very brief on this one. We don't know what to do with young women anymore. As a society, post-war, we did this thing where we were like, women belong in the workforce too. That concept took 20 years minimum to really catch hold at all, right? So you're really looking at like, let's say the 70s is when it's really kicking in. And even then it's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. That's less than 50 years, right? Like two generations, sort of, not even, you know, because they haven't even gone all the way through the cycle yet, right? Yeah. So we've had far less than two generations, realistically, of the the, the sort of strong independent woman thing that we're pushing, right? I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I don't want anybody saying that I'm on some wrong side of whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's new, right? That has a cultural ripple effect that we do not understand. It has never happened in history. I know somebody's going to name some tribe somewhere that's a matriarchy, but right. I'm going to point out a million examples of how it's not the matriarchy you think it is. And it's certainly not 
one-to-one parity on everything, which is what we're trying to achieve, right? right? We're having a ripple effect as a society, and it is confusing the crap out of young men and women because no one has any sort of guideposts for what they're doing anymore. And that can be exciting for some, but right. for a lot of people, it's going to be terrifying and confusing. Yeah. Most people need direct guidance. For sure. And right. I, and I will say I'm, you know, was from an abnormal situation. I was raised by a very strong single mother who right. was awesome and who was also raised by a very strong single mother. Like my mom taught me how to run power tools. Right. I'm aware that that is abnormal. I mean, I come from a, a, a hybrid relationship family in a way because my father right. was retired and was the one that raised me at home. And my mother went to work every day and was a workaholic. Right. And so I was used to mom at work, dad at home cooking meals. But. And those, neither of us are any worse off for it. Yeah, no, I mean, well, maybe. But there is well, a. I'm, well, yeah, we might be. But there's. Yeah, a, there's I mean, you're really a, messed up. I'm normal. <laughs> these things develop. Right. For it, a reason. It, there's always exceptions, but the yeah. point is you and I both had guideposts right. on our role to being adult men. Right. Th- were they perfect? No. Did we make mistakes? Yes. But we had guideposts, and it's certainly, even if not for relationships with the opposite gender, we had guideposts for how to handle each other, how to express mm-hmm. ourselves to other men, how to have actual friendships that function. Right. I. It feels like we are trapped in a society. Have you ever been in a high school English class? where you read a pretty good book. You, you read the book for the class and you went, ah, it's pretty good. And then by the end of the class, they had so over deconstructed it beyond any just, intention. You just of find it disgusting. Not even that, yeah. but it's just like, they'll go beyond the author's intentions. Like every right. high school English class has to be yeah. like this massive deconstruction. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this woman did not write it this way. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, you're like, there's no way she What do they actually, mean by the? Said, you know, yeah. Okay. And so, like, it feels like as a society, we've sort of turned in on ourselves so much that we've deconstructed our society, own society to the point that we, everybody's having these wild interpretations, misinterpretations of what anything means or where it came from or why or what we're supposed to do about it. And it's just like, I look around and I'm like, oh, my God, I, I just... I, I just I just want to go to the mall and hang out with my friends. Yeah. Like, I just, like I'm just so tired of this. Yeah, it's crushing. It's devastating. This, this fucking sucks. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you know. So then kids get mad and then they take it out. Well, go figure. Like, and by the way, it should be assigned to us that they take it out on just, like just people in general. There's there's no targeted individual. They just hate the people around them and they lash out at them. There is another thing that I I found in my research specifically about school shootings. They've never happened in the hood, and they, they haven't. Is that because hood beef is direct? Like it's just like I hate that guy. I think that is what I am led to believe is that. People who live in areas where it is more dangerous and, and confrontations are more direct have to learn to settle their differences in a human way, <laughs> right? Mm, I mean, you're you're probably onto something. I really think it's that. It's, or it's, even if it's an yeah. inhuman way, at least it's like there. You know, what I mean, like yeah. you're mad at that guy. You're not like you're not feeling this like thing that everybody's out to get you. It's just this one guy. To be fair, I wonder. Well, there's tighter has- communities too, where you live closer to your neighbors and you have to deal with them. Right. So they, they learn conflict management and resolution skills, whether or not they be the best ones. They do. Um, you know, you say what you will about these neighborhoods. They don't have any school shootings. Mm. Period. End of story. <laughs> to be fair, they have metal detectors. So. <laughs> <laughs> but who's going to, they'll just leave it open. <laughs> anyway, so hold on. We've gotten so far down the tracks so that we're on like an hour. So let's, let's get off the high horse for a second. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about the fact that, okay, all that aside, this is obviously we could go mm-hmm. for hours about yeah. society, expectations, psychology. Uh, we've talked about actual physical security. We've talked about everything yeah. except for guns. Right. Because you and I firmly believe that the core problem is the gun. If you have a healthy society, a truly healthy community, you could have a big red button that blows up the whole town. And as long as you have like a little cap over it so nobody accidentally drunkly falls on it, yeah. you know what I mean? No one's going to intentionally no push the button. Is. If everybody in your village is happy, yeah. no one's going to hit the blow up everybody in the village button, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that, so we're, that we've gone through that part of it. Right. right? Let's talk about the actual guns because, uh, and this is something I alluded to earlier. I think the biggest problem with these tragedies is they like to, and it's like the death thing. Well, what do you do about the deaths? Well, what do you do about the deaths? There is an, there is a cultural moral argument around 
freedom versus danger. And for every one of these incidents, they try to immediately fixate it onto the firearm. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, they want to take your firearm. Like that, that's, that's their first goal. Take the firearm. They want it. They don't want you to have it. They want them locked up. Then there's various reasons. Right. Control, fear, whatever. I don't care. They want to physically take the firearm. So they are going to twist every one of these stories into, I should be able to take that firearm or yep. he should be able to take that firearm. So yeah. with that part of it in mind, getting to the true root of it, discard the entire argument, discard mm -hmm. their excuse. How the hell do you keep a better grip on your firearm? Because I would recommend VZ grips. That is big, actually. So let's, <laughs> let's check. That was awesome. Let's check it out. I, um, you know, that was, that was fantastic. Uh, VZ Grips getting your money's worth. VZGrips.com, uh, proudly made in the United States of Florida. They have available all kinds of different items that are for sale online. Guess what? I got my first revolver. Uh, not my first revolver. I got my first Smith & Western revolver. Mm. I got an end frame. I bought uh, just the frame and barrel from a pawn shop, and then I slowly filled it with parts I got online. Let's see. You know, I'm missing one thing, though. You know what I'm missing? Did you, did you buy that used? Yes. Did you say, hand me the end frame? <laughs> yes. Did they know what that meant when you asked them that? Uh, yes, Greg is very familiar with this. <laughs> because if he wasn't knowledgeable... <laughs> I actually have a double N. Uh, it's an N prefix N frame. Yeah. Matt is a collector of guns with uh, N designations. I actually am. I really like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing. Don't read into it. But it's missing uh, grips. It doesn't have... That's the only part I don't have. Do they sell N frame grips at VZ Grips? Like I don't know. Let's find out together. Okay. So I think that would be under... What do you think it would be under? Semi-automatic uh, pistol. Knives. A revolver. Knives? Okay. 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 No, it's not here, but they have the pencil I like. What's that VZ dagger? What's that? Oh, they sell grips for zero tolerance knives. What? That's a cool obliterator. Yeah, what is that? Punch ripper dagger. That's the sternum uh, raker 4000. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the throat chucker. <laughs> you can get a sheath. For that. <laughs> I do not want to get in with that shit, though. <laughs> And it was zero tolerance. We call this the blood raker. Oh, it's just the knife. Handling. Yeah, they sell the scales for zero tolerance knives. Oh, okay. Those are popular knives. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, that's that knife we all know and love. I yeah. totally use that. I totally haven't been carrying the same. That's how I got suspended. Grip. Zero tolerance. <laughs> right, okay, go to so revolver so grips. Where the, you're, you're end frame. A revolver okay, grip. A revolver? Okay. So they got, look, they got all these different ones. Look, they got end frame. I got the square bottom. I want that one. Did you did you already order these? Or are you literally doing it now? I'm doing it right now. And I think I'm going to go with hyena brown mm -hmm. with black inserts. Wait, go for the green. Look at the green. Okay. It's not green. You're colorblind. It's predator green. It's a, there's another green. Oh. Dirty olive. Oh, yeah. Dirty olive is the way to go. Really? I like yeah, hyena yeah. brown. Well, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> it'll it'll <laughs> just like, merge in with the background. Well, oh. <laughs> brown man in a brown room with brown grips. <laughs> Look at my brown gun. <laughs> well, anyway, if you guys want to brown up your room, brown up your life, um, brown up your pants, <laughs> check out VZ Grips. Use the coupon code. You can clip it at checkout this I, week 15. I literally have these. They're very aggressive, and I like it. Yeah. Um, I have won over many a person with my VZ Grips. Physically. Yeah. No, they like my gun. It's very... I could. I could have, like... I could be covered in Vaseline and blood and still hold on to that gun. I, I don't ask really, me why I know that. I was one of those people that, that hated uh, CZs just because I hate Reddit and I hate Redditors. Yeah. And it's like the official gun of Reddit. But then I shot your carry pistol and I was like, okay, well, maybe it's not terrible. It, it suffers from the same thing as the Beretta 92 where it's yeah. like the grips themselves are too chunky. But then like you get because the rubber grips suck on the VZ. I'm sorry. Right. And then the factory plastics suck too because they're slick. I Slipping. mean, they're like Teflon coated. Mm -hmm. And then you grab, I seriously went for the most aggressive thing I could find and I ended up with the VZ grips. And yep. they, they really did. Like they slimmed down the gun. The grip feels perfect. I got a buddy that's a Glock fan, huge Glock fan. And after shooting my gun, it was that and they don't sponsor the show, but Cajun Gunworks trigger job in there. 
Mm-hmm. And like that sold him. He switched over to a CZ for his carry gun, although he doesn't talk about it and he refuses to admit it. Oh, this is our friend? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's got the same exact grips and the same exact color, and I got confused when you both handed me your gun. I didn't know who Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> yes. He got like his gun. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, I know they're sponsoring the show, but literally I use them, so go check yeah. it out. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, guys, check them out. Thank you so much. Um, all right. You know what? I think it's important we talk about ballistics. Oh, all right, because listen. Now, Matt, can you get you the trust NPR, of ballistics? Because that's a big word. Wait, what? It's a big word, ballistics. What does that mean? Oh, uh, ballistics? You know, I don't actually know the definition. Isn't it just the study of, um, like, energy transfer over, like, a long uh, period? This or, is, uh, ballistics is at the root of the human experience. Because every human male, I, I suspect as a species, I think Homo sapien, I believe, was, like, the original thing thrower. Right. Uh, like that's, that's it. That's our survival is throwing things right. real good. Right. Yeah. When you were a kid throwing things real good. Yeah. Make it go. So everything like just yeah. far, fast, hard. Yeah. 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 Ball- ballistics is in the human soul. Yeah. We like it when the thing goes. Yeah. We could hit this something over there and I'm going to hit it. Yeah. I'm going to look, I got this thing. I'm going to throw it's, it at that. Yeah. It's part of our evolutionary biology. I swear. Yeah. I swear it is. Yeah. When you're a kid, you find a rock and what do you do? Yeah. You throw it. Yeah. <laughs> Especially well, at your friend. Especially, especially at the girl you like. You 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 grew up in Florida. You know the game. Kudzu seed pods. Oh, yeah. You hook <laughs> them at each other and come home with the welts. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm surprised. I, I'm surprised, like, my whole neighborhood didn't have their parents in for, like, uh, beating their kids. Because right. just hucking those things at each other. Yeah, these things fall from the trees and, like, we... There would, of course, be the one kid who would try to eat them. But everyone else would just oh, sling them at each other. No, you actually, the best thing to do is to put them up uh, behind the shed for like a week and let them get all <laughs> Yeah, let them get all hard and husky. No, no they get like kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> you just hook them and they, <laughs> oh, yeah, and they go, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the orange ones that get yeah. all messed. I also well, understand the ballistic coefficient of um, giant spiders. Because we would take two sticks and get the big, the big golden orb weavers. Yeah. And then you'd get them in the two sticks and then like at lateral, double at lateral. You just, and it would land directly on your friend's head, like 30 yards away. And he would just. And then the screaming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. (laughs) Why um, is our society healthier than the current one? (laughs) That shouldn't have made people healthier. Well, you know what doesn't make people healthier? What's that? AR-15. Oh, no. This is NPR. They're the national pubic radio they and listen what does npr hold at the core your tax dollars are worth this listen dispassionate news words okay the ar-15 from the empire is designed to blow targets apart its bullets travel with such velocity that they can decapitate an adult No, this, it sounds like copy pasta. <laughs> it's no, it's like literally this is a shit post. This but is, here this, by the way, NPR. what he's reading is a literally a tweet, right? Is this a tweet? from NPR? From NPR with the check mark, like oh, they got the little cookie check mark. Yep. And then of course this guy makes a, a the correct point. Meanwhile, it's not legal to hunt deer in many states with it because it's too small around to put the deer down humanely. Oh. It's because duh, it can only decapitate an adult. Nobody tell them about 30 out 6. Let's just don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, NPR? Yeah. Like, Nobody geez. tell NPR about 4570, which, like, Walmart still sells and is, like, the round for just destroying a human. Yeah. Yep. Well, <laughs> when you don't want to pick up the iguana. <laughs> yeah, when iguana gone. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there's the other thing, which everyone's been saying. Mr. Jonathan Biden, he said the nine millimeter bullet blows the lung out of the body. <laughs> like, uh, what have uh, these people, have they been playing Duke Nukem? Like, is that what's up? No, they're just saying things. Like, you got to understand, all this is marketed to people that don't know. Right. If you have any concept of what nine millimeter or 223 does, then you don't, you're, you're, you're not voting for these guys anymore. You know I mean? Not that you're not voting, but you, if you're, if you know what they do and you're sympathetic to what they're saying, you're just going to kind of roll your eyes and be like, uh, guys, you need to say it better next time because that's not quite right. But I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. If you don't know anything about guns, then at least they've got a chance of freaking you out. Like this is just classic scare tactic garbage because you know what? At the end of the day, 
if it doesn't blow your lungs out, who cares? I don't yeah. want to get shot through the heart with a twenty two. Yeah, I don't like getting shot at all. It's like tough. I don't want if I I don't want like if I have children and they're at school, I don't want them shot by anything. Like I don't want it to be twenty five. I don't want to be twenty two. I don't want to be nine millimeter. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to sit there and be like, uh, they're not going to call me and be like, hey, uh, your kid's been shot. And I'm like, oh, my God, was it a 22 or a 9 millimeter? Like, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna be like, are they okay? I understand the argument is like, well, they're more likely to be okay with 22 than 9. It's like, yeah, I guess, but there's so Why many. Why the 22 is going to bounce in the brain? Bounce around. Like the, it's, you got, it's like a 25 raven, and you cut, yeah. the, you cut the bullet so that it splits up on the other side of the brain. <laughs> so, yeah. like, let's. And I was thinking, like, what could possibly be the context for him to say this? And this gets into our next story, which is like a, a bit of dipshit sophistry that is so deeply ingrained in this discussion. So it's, this is Biden's quote. Right. And I sat with a trauma doctor and I asked him, I said, what's the difference? I said, why are they dying? And he showed me. Why x-rays. are they dying? Well, they were shot, you idiot. <laughs> well, he, he showed me the x-rays and he said, a 22 caliber bullet will lodge in the lung and we can probably get it out, may be able to get it and save the life. A nine millimeter bullet blows the lung out of the body. So the, the idea of these high caliber weapons is of there's simply no rational basis for it in the terms of thinking about self protection hunting. And remember, the Constitution, the Second Amendment was never absolute. You couldn't buy a cannon when the Second Amendment was passed. Yes, you could. You yeah, couldn't you go out and purchase could. a lot of weapons. There's literally a lot. There's we have letters from privateers. Yeah. To the founders, going, yeah. "Hey, dog, is it okay if I have this literal weapon of war?" Like this, this crude ship full of cannons, and they're like, "Yeah, man, that's all you." Like, yeah. no, and we also had the, the, the um. Do I need a permit? Uh, privateers for this? who'd it's, be like, "It's the it's the original ATF letter." Do yeah. I, is this okay? Do I need a permit for this? Yeah, yeah dog, like, go, go raid the British. Yeah, like you yeah, know, it's like if you if you take the British ship, you're allowed to keep it in all the cool toys. Neat. <laughs> 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 like that's how it was when the Second Amendment right. was ratified, and. You know, people often like people put a little too much weight on the uh, the puckle gun, right? It was it was not like a real no, that's thing. That's like a meme thing. It was yeah. a meme, but the founders like it's documented that they were stoked on it, right? Right? Like Jefferson Jefferson ordered one. <laughs> yeah, he's like, dang, I want this. But the the, the one that they freaked out about was the Gerondoni air rifle. They were like, this is sick. Right? You could keep shooting it. <laughs> You make somebody else pump it up. It takes forever. But then I you can hate so many people. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the problem is the founders didn't like. They hated murderers. Right, murder was a deeply personal thing in their time, for the most part. Although this is something you and I've talked about. Actually, this is mm-hmm. a funny thing that nobody ever talks about. They were absolutely aware of what we would consider to be a mass shooting of their time, because one of the original felonies was mayhem. Mm-hmm. Like, do you want to tell people what mayhem actually is? It, well, it is the, I'll leave out the legal standard, but it's whacking people apart. It's like dismembering people. Yeah, in a frenzy, pretty much. Just yeah. being no, like, it's, it's yeah, going around actions where you're wantonly people. and recklessly yeah. disintegrating humans. Yeah, and so that's yeah, what mayhem is not necessarily killing, it is any disintegration of the human body. Right, but like, yeah. The, the the implication was heavily that you just were like ah and just went nuts <laughs> yeah, like they had seen it before yeah no they didn't call they didn't call um there were instances where it was charged but it was like usually it would be you know a serious battery or if you like went and hacked on one person but usually right. the instances of mayhem are mass mayhem <laughs> right yeah. yeah they would they just didn't call it what we call it you yeah. know but they they had I don't know they had they had their own schizos right like they had right. their own they're own bad actors, but yeah. they still let you have a cannon. <laughs> you could have a well, cannon. Well, even when you... Mur- Not only that, but that's a committed- really unsafe thing to have around, because it just goes... I mean, even Mythbusters couldn't keep that under control. Right. <laughs> You have to like kind of know what you're doing to not have it be horrifying. <laughs> and they were like, whatever. <laughs> just Who cares? They let you uh, have this stuff back when there's a 50-50 chance that it would blow up on you. Yeah. It'll either go that way or here. <laughs> <laughs> the breach plug, well, we haven't figured out welding. So, yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, but that gets me to the um, the next thing. After talking about all the ballistic stuff, look. I get it. We like the sticks. We like the frog throwing. Um, we like throwing the, the tree nuts. But shouldn't we be listening to surgeons about this stuff? About what? 
Guns. Don't are look we, at me like that. You, uh, don't look at me with that tone of voice. He's giving me a very, like, his eyes are all wide. And <laughs> I, I, I just feel like it's one of those things where it's like, I don't really want to ask life insurance adjusters right. about, like, my oh, like a pool. Like, yeah. what, should I buy a pool? You know what I mean? Because they're going to be like, no. Like, if they're life insurance <laughs> guys, they're going to be like, no, no pool for you. <laughs> it's literally the last person to ask because it's like, it, it, you know, they also do that. They thing, only like, see it when it goes wrong. Yeah, well, it's like people talk about how negative police officers can get because right. they only handle people at their worst, right? Mm -hmm. Well, surgeons are largely running into people with crappy organs. Who are disintegrated otherwise. They've been hit by something. Yeah. Like, but as, as you can see, just with the, the president, it's a growing trend where the appeal to authority is to say, listen, these guns are bad. I got a doctor. And the doctor's like... The AR gun make them bad. The other gun, not quite as bad to do. It's like, so the American College of Surgeons are, are getting together. This is just announced today. And they're staging a conference on America's firearm public health crisis. Okay. Uh, when, where, um, yeah. The, oh, it's actually, it's June 2nd. Live streaming available. Washington, D.C., accelerating our response to America's fire and public health crisis. Let me just tell you something. Yeah. The biggest, like, anti-dog whistle out there for me is when people use public health and firearm anywhere near each other. I think that's a little unfair. Is it? Yeah, because I definitely caught the clap from a Ruger. <laughs> so, if no, I had no. just been warned <laughs> about the transmissibility of the clap, <laughs> from Bill Ruger. Well, you're stomach. not supposed to be licking the stocks. <laughs> I'm just saying. Did you get, <laughs> was there a single gosh darn pamphlet printed to help me? So was for those there, of you who don't Matt? know, public health originated. Like, the study of public health originated from why are people dying when they drink from this well? Right. And then it's like, like literally the first public health activity was it's actually this well we're going to turn it off. <laughs> and that, like, that was it. It's about huh. studying like toxins and like pathogens and shit. And, and, and public health is a good study for dealing with something that is noxious, right? <laughs> that has no beneficial utility. Public health is completely inutile when it comes to something that has beneficial uses. Not only that, like, but we're quite sure of what's killing them. <laughs> it's, it's the bullet. It's the projectile. <laughs> Like it's it goes fast. We, we uh, this is within the this is within the design parameters. Like yeah. I, I'm not saying that we want it to happen right. unless we do. Like I'm gonna say, like with our audience, there's a number of you that are quite happy to have a very effective and very deadly bullet at the right moment. Yeah, at a very specific moment. <laughs> I, I like how you and I have referred to uh when I when I got that uh, visible loader. And we were, we found out that they do a funny thing. Um, okay, so a visible loader too. is a very old pump action twenty two rifle with a tubular magazine. And it holds like eighteen rounds, and it slam um, fires. Yeah, so yes, it has a it has a safety sear, which means it won't release the hammer until the the gun is in battery, and that it will release the hammer when the gun is in battery. So you just hold that trigger and pump away. Yep, and the pump travel is like half an inch. So you sit there and just basically <laughs> jerk off the gun, and it goes bang. <laughs> and uh, you refer to imagine it you're as, like a super soaker fight as a kid, but every time you're hurriedly trying to get that one shot ready, you're just letting loose. <laughs> and, and I love the way you referred to it. You said <laughs> you were like, "How about a swarm of really angry bees, Iguan? <laughs> <laughs> Fifty-five grain angry bees." <laughs> So it is funny how we think of the projectile, right? Because when you're shooting an iguan, it's a funny little bee, right? And then when you're in a self-defense situation, you'd probably have very different right. <laughs> ways of thinking yeah, about like, the projectile. When, I'm, when, when there's an iguana in my yard and the state has ruled it a pest animal, yeah. and that I can legally discharge a weapon in city limits as long as it's at an iguana, yeah. I'm way good with 22. Yeah. But when it comes to someone, you know, about to cave my head in with a pickaxe, uh... Uh, 357 SIG sounds nice. Yeah. Well, you gotta get the 45. Our mutual friend Jameson just turned me on to 357 SIG. Did he? I'm really in love with it. Yeah? Yeah. 
It's what about the thirty super cage? I have one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I like the cartridge. We'll need to have some actual <laughs> guns come out that are designed for it. Matt refuses to agree with a particular person. That's your whole game. Oh no, I love the cartridge. Oh, okay, good. No, I love the cartridge. I think it's great. Oh, um, okay. I think that the only two guns that are available right now were like very quick stop gaps. Yeah. Where it's like you could have totally fit 20 rounds of that in the shield and they're like, let's just keep mm. it single stack. All right. Mm. Holds the same amount. <laughs> they could have done the loose stagger like, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, with the Savage 1907 keeps yeah. coming up in this show. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> that old, it's the shit fed, load. Can we just do like a modernized Savage 1907 in 30 super carry? That'd be awesome. That is the play because it would have the thickness of a Glock. Uh, and it would have 43. that rifle delayed blowback, which is the <laughs> best blowback delay. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? As long as well, it vaguely... Add a magnet in there and, boy, it practically Magnets locked, locked and breach. And if you're feeling really good, put a dollop of peanut butter in there. Mm-hmm. You'll have no recoil whatsoever. Yeah. Guaranteed. So, well, anyway, this the surgeons the are... Show ever, man. This is a bizarre... What? Yeah, we're terrible at this. Whatever. No, we're good at it. Everybody say in the comments if we're good at it or bad at it. If we're bad at it, well, I'll... They already left. Okay? It's too late to ask. What? It's too late to last. They already left. Keep going. What's the point? Shut up. Uh, so, uh, just real quick, the Canadians have been really active for some reason. Uh, within the past month, they registered all long guns and then suspended handgun sales. And a lot of people are like blown away. And people are like, "How are they able to do that? Didn't How they, they abandon a long gun registry years ago? Yes, because it had no effect on crime and no one used it." Yep. But it was costing them millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And, so and then now in a week, it's back. For reasons. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on with the handguns? So he, he's saying we're going to figure out you know, how to address this. It's temporary. It will no longer be possible <clears throat> to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. Um, it's said that this is going to be temporary. I don't know what's actually going to happen. Um, what does that even mean? I don't... No, but people are asking, like, how could this happen so fast, right? Yeah. It's like, last month, there was no registry and none of this crap was going on. Well, it doesn't happen fast because they don't have an amendment uh, based on it. Well, it's even worse than that. And they do have the natural fundamental human right, right, to these weapons. But Oh, wait, does Canada have that? Well, the people have it. Oh, no, no, but the government doesn't recognize it, so, you know. No, the government doesn't recognize it. No, no, natural rights are the thing. Natural (laughs) rights, look, we've already gone over this. The French agree. It's what the government gives you. Yeah. <laughs> natural <laughs> rights naturally come from the government. Yeah, um, but they, the most natural thing in the world is government. So the thing about parliamentary systems, and people always like cry, right? Like stupid idiot little Europeans will cry and be like, your system of government is so broken, you can't get anything done. Yes. Because look at this. When the prime minister is from the same party as the majority, they're basically king and they can do whatever at any point. Like mm. with very little, um, very, very, very little limitation. There's allegedly a charter of rights uh, in Canada. I've looked into it and I've, I've seen one judge in one Canadian judge threaten to overturn a gun law on it, but didn't. Mm. So <laughs> I, I I don't know. That's just a little thing. Nothing really much to say about it. I mean, it's not really an important country. Um, next up, we just got to cover well, it. Hold on, hold on. I will say, if we're talking about Canadian gun law, there was a guy that I was following, uh, Runkle of the Bailey. Who okay. is the, everybody needs to look at this guy because he's a Canadian uh, attorney that focuses on firearms. Oh, okay. And I was, checking, I was checking his page real quick. It's Runkle of the Bailey, just to say that again. Mm-hmm. And uh, it looks like he's mostly covering Johnny Depp right now. So I guess I don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's how I usually keep up on Canadian firearm laws, this guy. But I think Johnny Depp won out. Oh, uh, that's terrible. Wrong call. Uh, Come on, man. Give me a video here. I, also, I love oh, you want me to pull it up? He's the anti Matt. You know, because it's Rumpel? like. Can't... R-U-M-P-L-E? No, wrong R U N K L E of the it. Bailey. It's also a name harder to spell than CNR, so which is great. Titter. Yeah. Here's his, 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 his <clears> use too. <throat> I, I like Runkle because in my mind he's the he's like the Canadian Matt Larosier. Because wow, he's, you are you got a good channel, two hundred two hundred K. Yeah. Well he's got he's think about this, he's up in the, the cold north, Canada, mm-hmm. right? And you're down in like warm, sunny Florida, you know? 
Mm-hmm. And he's Canadian, you're American, and he is a white man with white hair, and you are a brown man with brown hair. Like you guys are just like the yin and yang of gun coverage. So you think but, we should kiss? Uh no. Uh I'm saying you should probably do uh Johnny Depp coverage. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I find this guy very interesting, but I will say he kind of looks like an Oblivion character. <laughs> I actually really like him. I, I would like I to go on with him. All, the problem you know, is when he does actual when he does Canadian gun content, I actually check in. Yeah, um, no, he did a Parliament Firearms Control live stream. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder yeah, it seems live like streams that. a bit much. I feel like I want to. And probably this. also your depth questions. Wow, mm. that's yeah, it's too many things at once. Yeah, no, um, the depth stuff is really doing well for him. <laughs> he's got a lot of views on the depth stuff. Well, I think he's been he's working with Rikita. Oh, okay. So that's probably how he got on that train. But honestly, honestly, I really like his Canadian firearms content. So for sure, yeah. Well, next up we okay. have. Uh, oh God! Yeah, I know what's it's coming. Yeah, You're yeah, gonna do that okay. thing where you start drooling. Are your pants on, Matt? No, stop! This is Cory Booker's law. Oh, you, I looked for it one ahead. Stupid, yeah, you dumb idiot. I was like, what does he mean by that? No, so they've <laughs> they've got this law that they put through. Of course, it's probably not going to go anywhere, but it's so like puzzling. It's the Federal okay, Firearms what is it? what is Licensing on? Act. Federal it's Firearms Licensing Act. Um, and what it is, is it, it adds a new type of FFL. So is this a proposed, code. hold on, is this a proposed bill? What is this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I don't, uh, um, get me down to schoolhouse General, rock levels, Matt. It's a federal bill that's okay. proposed. It's up now. Last time I checked, it no, didn't have a bill wait, number fe- yet. Federal, that's the bad guys, right? It's the big guys. Yeah, the big bad okay. guys. Yep. The bad guys. Okay. Yep. The, it means it could affect you. Okay. And it, but I don't, wants, live, I don't live in the federal. Shut up. He wants to add another type of FFL. And you might be thinking, oh, cool. Maybe it's for like the place that also sells alcohol. <laughs> I don't know. No. It is a federal license to purchase. And now it's not a license, license to possess. License to purchase what? A firearm. I can already do that. I don't. I don't need that. Well, not anymore because it fixes it. So <laughs> it, it becomes unlawful for any person who is a non-licensee to engage in any transaction involving a firearm. Oh, this sounds so lovely. And so you have to get a federal firearms purchasing license, and the government may respond within ninety days. Mm-hmm. You have to get one for each firearm you purchase because your license has to indicate which firearm it is. Mm-hmm. And now, again, it's not a license to possess. You must complete the transaction within 30 days of the license's issuance. Okay. And your license expires in five years? So Wait, how can it does... expire in five years if you can only use it within the first 30 days and it's a purchasing license, not a Not a possession license. license. I don't know, but there, I kept reading it, and it's, and oh, and you can have it extended by request. Extended so, for what? Well, I didn't so purchase I read the it, first and month, I, but now I can sit here and have this useless piece of paper forever. Well, so I, I read it, and then I looked, and I saw oh. that if a judge revokes this license at any time, the government must make efforts to get the gun back. So the way I read the law, the way it's drafted right now, seems to suggest that you have this five-year period where the government can snatch your gun whenever it wants, and you can extend that okay. for some even... reason. Yeah, why would you extend it? I don't this, know. Because it doesn't expl- it's not a license to possess, and it doesn't specifically say if the license lapses, then you lose the gun. It says if your license is revoked. This literally doesn't make it. sense, which actually makes, makes the most sense of all. Yes. Like, let's quicker. be honest, this is mm-hmm. how it always goes. They just do things that don't make any, like... Yes. Even towards their own goals, they don't make any stupid sense. Well, and so there's, it adds a lot of reasons that you can be denied. So you get a background check done on you when you apply for the license. Mm -hmm. And it specifically shall not be read to eliminate the background check requirement when you pick up the gun. So there's another one. Okay. Um, And it adds new things that you can be denied for, one of which is the recent purchase of a firearm. What? Now, don't worry. This law wouldn't be everywhere. If the attorney general determines that a state has a substantially similar law, it won't be enforced in that state. Which, by the way, is them trying to get the states to do it because they yes. know that this is interstate. Like, this is not interstate commerce. Yeah, they, they know that they, like, if they can just trick the states into doing it, they can go, ha hands off, ha ha. Yeah, we didn't do it. Didn't yeah, do no. it. 
this is hot garbage. This is nowhere in, in this is this has nothing to do with the federal government's jurisdiction. Yeah. It, it, this is. Jer- I mean, just Jer- just by the way, this is a thing that we really forget about. From whence does the power flow, and what are they allowed to do with it? Yes, the first step it, <clears throat> in a, in now analyzing a government action is to find a legitimate source of power for the action. Right. And unfortunately, in the past sixty years, we've just started going. Uh, they did the it, big yes. government say so. It's the most government, so it has. The, <laughs> and you're like, no, you yeah. morons. It's it's interstate. It's not supposed yeah. to be intra. It's supposed yeah. to be inter. Well, like, and even the Commerce Clause, the way the court has read it, is wildly beyond what the the. the, the <laughs> oh, I mean, we've intended. we've we've exceeded yeah. it in so many ways. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But this is the Commerce Clause was literally written to say that the federal government can prevent Georgia from taxing goods from Florida. Right. Like that's what it was for. Right. And now it's they're like to prevent war, like essentially economic yeah. warfare between the states. Between the states, exactly. Which we would have done country. because we hated each other. <laughs> but they put the word "unite." These United States right. was a cope trying to keep us from killing each other. Yeah. Well, and it happened under the Articles of Confederation. No, no, that's the United States. Right. No, I'm saying back in the Articles, states oh, yeah, start yeah, yeah, dicking yeah, yeah. with each other and putting yeah, tariffs yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it was like, Actually, you know, it's a really good TV show, that, like, it, just a great TV show, but they, they, they're not nearly as uh, direct as they should be, but you can watch it and get enough information to realize, you know, what was really good? Uh, how the states got their shapes that first season. Oh. <laughs> it's, have you ever seen that? No. Oh, you got to watch that. The I know some of the terrible. stories because it's, like, absurd. Like, <laughs> oh, it's just, it's literally like interstate warfare yeah. and boundary fights. And I mean, it's just, it's, it is, it is the easiest path for you to understand how much the United States was Europe. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like mini Europe yeah. and they just messed with each other so bad, but yeah, it's a really good series. It's, how, so how, we- how, oh, it, it's so weird that that's been eliminated for so many Americans. Like they feel so homogenized. No, we I don't feel even like talk the, about it hardly. Except for us who live in the Southeast, who, haven't given up on it. <laughs> like, I don't I met, like you. <laughs> I, I met a gentleman uh, in a professional. So I met a gentleman that was just. I was like, "Where are you from?" And he was just. He hesitated. Like he paused, and he goes, "Oh, uh, I'm from um, Northern California." And I like. Um, he said it with such shame, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, like, like eyes downcast, you know. And I was just like, "Oh, Jefferson." Mm-hmm. Because there's a California secessionist yep. movement to form the northern part into a state called Jefferson, for anybody who doesn't know. And yep. so I was like, oh, you're from Jefferson. And he goes, yeah, how do you know about that? You know, he was like, <laughs> nobody from the East Coast has ever known about that. Yeah. And I was just like, well, I'm from South Carolina, so we keep track of all secessions. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little notebook, and we keep notes on them and how they're going. Like, it's just how it goes. <laughs> so oh, that's so good. Well, it's like, yeah, no, I have only had a couple awkward interactions where somebody, somebody was saying something, they were from New Jersey and they're like, I don't get it. I don't get why down here they, blah, blah, blah. They act like there's like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, we remember what you did. <laughs> and, and, yeah. that, was, that was the end of it. Like, I was like, I, I mean, even as late as World War II. It was just like, oh, man, the Americans really came in and, and the, after crushing Germany, they turned around and went, we can't just, it's going to be like World War One, you know, uh, it's going to be this Weimar stuff all over again. We need to actually help rebuild Germany this time. And all the Southerners are looking around going, they still haven't rebuilt the shit from 100 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Like, if they're rebuilding Germany, yeah. that's still burned down. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I, when I went to law school, there was still wreckage. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. You can find it. It's all over the place. It's kind of fucked up. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and that's a that's a brown guy saying it. So it's yeah, it's fair. It's not yeah, racist. It's fair. I'm allowed. Anyway, let's talk about let's talk about one positive story that's not an advertisement. Let's do one. What is it? This is what he was talking about. Where he said, "Are you drooling? Are you yeah. drooling? Yeah, because you have a problem. No, I don't. You Wait, no, I don't. You have a fixation. Shut up." This is, is it this Walter? Is, they this got a is, new Walter this is, out. This, this is your Funko Pop collection. Listen. <laughs> Look, it's new. It's uh-huh. the WMP. 
Walther so, Magnum pistol. All right, and so like let's say it's a regular pistol with regular. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's regular ammo, but the pistol's Magnum. Yeah, it's it's, it's like huge. Yes, yeah, um, it's just like a regular nine millimeter with a giant grip. So, <laughs> if you were to be a gun company who's respected, and you were to come out with the Magnum <clears throat> pistol, right? What caliber would it be in? Um, forty six. Nice. Uh, <laughs> It's a 22 mag, which I feel like is just like a horrible waste of the of the name Name. Magnum pistol. Maybe they just know their market though, because I feel like 22 mag is always marketed on the word Magnum. Yes, this thing looks slick. Okay, so it's a semi-automatic handgun. Yep, it's a semi-automatic handgun. It looks a lot like a PPQ. It's an RMR cut. I can't Mm -hmm. tell. RMR cut and a fancy Fibre optic sight, which I actually hate. I don't Uh like. All these, I don't like all this crap. I just want a clean gun. Right. Here's the downside. It only holds 15 rounds. I kind of feel like if you're making a new 22 mag self-loading pistol, it's going to be in the hundreds of dollars range. Right. You got to have it hold like a brick load of rounds. Like, right. Because Keltec has kind of like wrecked it. Right. 30 rounds and it actually kind of works. <laughs> it actually kind of works. Yeah, no, so, so I feel like if Keltec can like make a Bruno 22 mag... I feel like Bruno can get over five rounds out of his before it breaks down. Oh, is it that bad? I don't know. I was just teasing. Oh, well, I have a, I, um, Every time I touch it, the thing gets... But this so I have the OG, and it's up there, the Grendel, mm. um, the P30 from the 90s. Right. And it was a it's the same mag, and that thing doesn't miss a beat. Nice. Um, and so I just feel like... If you're going to come out with a 22 mag pistol, it's like modern, you're definitely, if, especially full size or something like that. You're, yeah. You're, the the ticket that people are going to expect is capacity, capacity, right, huh? capacity. Yeah. And so 15, I feel like is like. Is it extremely light? Like what's? I don't understand what the gain is here. Then. I'm not sure what they're doing. You're going to buy it anyway. I'm going to buy it anyway. Yeah. I gotta. I gotta email. Maybe them. they're just testing. Maybe they're just like, look, we we sell out of everything we make. Let's just do this and see. Like they're just sitting there going, these idiots are going to buy it. Like, I, it's I. It might be that I. I don't know, or it might be some like weird Euro thing, right? Or um, it's, I mean, and also don't forget, it could be for the like this aged market, because if you're arthritic, yeah. and I'm not trying to be funny. Like I have a no, a, no, a, for sure. Well, like, just like their last pistol, the, the no, our, we have a mutual, we have a mutual good friend that's suffering arthritis like badly, right? Uh, Doc who. Mm-hmm. For some reason, put a bodyguard upside down in a cell phone holster as a cross draw, and we had to talk him out of that. <laughs> he was somehow this. I don't know why this was the solution to arthritis. I was like, it's harder to use, and you have to pull it out in this weird. Like he's supposed to like pull it out with like two fingers and flip it around. Yeah, you have arthritis, so you've put your gun in a Chinese puzzle box. I don't understand. I was like, Doc, I don't understand how this has anything to do with arthritis. I'm really confused. But, and I'm sure um, he explained it to you. <laughs> but if I imagine a sane person with arthritis having a full-size, very light handgun mm-hmm. that's shooting a lower recoiling cartridge... That's still fairly probably, right. powerful. Yeah. I feel like that would be less painful to use. You know, light Maybe. trigger, big grip. But then it still goes back to the magazine capacity thing where it's like, well, hold on. Why don't you give them... You know, even if you wanted the mag capacity thing to be about weight, then just don't, they won't let them load 15 rounds into a 30 round mag. They put a pin in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, but anyway, I thought uh, that was kind of cool and a little disappointed. They specifically say in the video, uh, when they said, are you going to do extended mags? The representative goes, Oh, uh, extended clipazines. Did he or, say that? Oh no, he, no, he said, he said stendo clips that, Oh, nice. stendo clips. We're going to leave that to the aftermarket. And then he actually stops and goes, I'm not sure if you want to have me saying that in there. <laughs> uh, do they give any hint as to what the use case is supposed to be here? No, let's let's. We're leaving in the the five minutes of silence, right? <laughs> Did you hear that? No, I can't hear anything. Oh, awesome! Cool. <laughs> like there's literally five minutes of silence now. Wow, awesome, great. Your uh, thing cool. doesn't stream I, desktop audio. I don't know why. What did he say? Just, the thing that you just repeated the, the thing I said, but you know, in a more awkward and, and like in him being like, oops, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know, stendo clips. No, that's for the aftermarket. Oh and then he like looks left and right, <laughs> but he doesn't explain the use case though. I, I, I don't really know, but anyway, who cares? There's something else that we care about though. Nobody asked them, did they? 
This is yeah, why I yeah, can't yeah, be, yeah, I can't go to these that. things because they, I'd be like, oh, why? You know what <laughs> I want from Walther? <clears throat> what? MPL, make another one. Everybody's going back to the like the eighties. Everybody's remaking old stuff. MPL, yeah, do it. Like make a tactical modern MPL that folds up really light. Yeah, um, it would sell like hotcakes. I can see it doing very well. Yep. But to be fair, they'll probably sell out of this too. There's a market we don't understand. I guarantee you, there's like yeah. there's, there's a reason I, we're not rich. We should give it to Doc and just watch what his face does, and then we'll know. Yeah. No. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna call them, and I'm gonna get. The ladies' model, and um, and the, and this thing, right. and we're gonna give them both to Doc one day after the other. Yeah, and we'll, we'll just make sure to, make, to no, tell them the F stands for freaking sweet. <laughs> no, no. What you do is you literally put them in the box in front of him with labels that say what they are, right? And you no, not even that. You just hand it, and you're like, "Hey, this is the F model." No, actually, no. It would have to be labels. It would have to be like the Walter F. The F stands for female. Right, or whatever. Right. And then the other one, 22 Mag, whatever. Just put yeah. them down in front of Walter Walter Magnum Pistol. Pistol. I know exactly what will happen. If you just, if, if it says Walther Magnum Pistol, he's going to go, like, he's going to, it's going to go straight between, the minute he knows it's not a revolver, he's actually going to know it's a, mag, a 22 Mag, unlike us. Right. Like, he's going to, he's going to say, Oh, 22 mag. The minute he sees it's semi-automatic, so that will be at that moment, we'll know that that was the market. Mm-hmm. But the other one that's going to happen is he's going to be like, he's going to see the one that's the F for female, and he's going to go, "Oh, I should buy one of these for my wife." Uh. Like it's just going to be like, like yep. just I should buy one for my wife because I swear to God that's a market. Like the market isn't the actually so much. I mean, I'm sure the we talked about how it's actually nice that they're targeting uh, women or right. uh, women's, but they're not. They're targeting husbands. But I think yep. that I guarantee you the husband buying it for the wife without even asking her mm-hmm. is probably a bigger market than the wife actually buying it. Like, and I, by the way, I encourage women to carry. I, the women around my life carry. But I'm just telling you that's a huge market. Like, I'm not trying to make a judgment call. It just is. You're a weird, stupid, sexist idiot. Yeah, thank you. And I hate what are you. you? Doing? Um, no, I'm just... Uh, just getting ready to talk about a really cool company. Oh, dude, are we sponsored by Craigslist? <laughs> Patriot Patch Company. Focus. Look at that. That's in focus. The website, it's not going to be in focus ever because that's how cameras work. It's also an audio program, so they just heard you make a bunch of grunting stuff. Yeah, Patriot Patch Company. Look at them. They're custom designed patches apparel and for sand accessories for any freedom loving individual. Enjoy the Patch of the Month Club. June exclusive is the. The funny this. car thing that we like. Yeah, it's the 4th of July one. They gave yeah, it to the, you early so that you'd have time for 4th of July, which is smart. Yeah. Yeah. No, you'd have time to actually kind of blow What's it up. What's the new pre-orders? Bit. Click the new pre-orders. That's new where pre-orders. the new stuff is. That's where the new stuff There is no products in this collection. That's fine. Oh, that's, There's going to be cool stuff coming out. No, I wanted to pre-order. Pop culture patches. Wait, yeah, hold on. We can sort alphabetically. What else can we... I like this. What? DIY, DIY home defense, home defense a, with a zip gun from the Home Depot. Yeah, well, it's a mag-fed pipe shotgun. Where'd they make the mag out of? Looks like. That's a mag. Think it's just it's a mag. <laughs> <laughs> We're the worst promoters of products. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because our brain does our brains do things they're not supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're natural critics, but to be so fair, you know it's what so that cool. you know what that thing was? What it was. What. What is that? I can't see it. A Franken gun. He's holding up a Franken gun uh, patch, and it has yeah. it has the uh, UGG boot of a scar on. I can't tell what lower that is. It looks like an FNC sort of... upper, an MP5 lower, a FAMAS carry handle, an a, like an AK or AR gas block. It, it's like it's got everything. This oh, and there's an ACOG f- on top of the FAMAS. There's a fair amount of thought in this, if I'm honest. Like I'm good. amazed. Yeah. Pretty good art. And if you join the Patch of the Month Club, every month you will get the new patch. You will get uh, the concept art that went into it. Uh, really good stuff. Use promo code TWIG10, T-W-I-G-10, for a discount on your mm-hmm. order. And they support us. You should support them. And also, you love patches. You guys love that. You guys right. you get, you buy that and you put it on the thing. Easy. Yeah, you put them on your little hat thing. You put on and your you hat. go around and then you make friends. Yeah, you make because, because other, other guys see like, it and they're like, "Yo, dog, do you listen to Twig with yeah. a brown guy and beard man?" Yeah, the beard boys. Yeah, 
And, or, 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 and you go, hey, do you fetishize firearms as well? Yeah. Yes, sir. I do. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, actually, um, a, a little gentle signaling does make you some friends sometimes. Like, I've definitely been out and just had people be like, yo, is that from whatever? And I'm like, yeah. And it's like, are we, did, you, did we just become friends? Yeah. Like, I, that would happen a lot with me when I would, well, I need to ride more. Yeah. I'd just be riding a Honda. And people come up and they're like, part next to another Honda. And you're going to make a friend. Oh, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. For those of you under the age of 40. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's older than 40. Too. Yeah, that, that was like like CL125 marketing. Like that, I was, know. that was like 1950s. Like <laughs> but you do meet the nicest people on a Honda. It is yeah. true. I definitely recommend riding an old Honda. You know, I this has to, a lot of people don't know that about you. really ruined the marketing on this one. But. On what? You guys sell the patches. We're not selling Hondas. They got motorcycle ones. They got motorcycle patches at Patriot Patch. Hold on. Uh oh. He's bringing it around. With a red leader. I can't really make it. You're upside you down. That. I literally can't understand what I'm looking at. Flip it over. Oh, it's got like antlers on a helmet. Yep. And some goggles. Yep. I think it's, it's Rudolph. Based. It doesn't feel like it's motorcycle based. That feels like it's. It doesn't matter. You can put it on your little motorcycle jacket. You can put it on your little, your little vest. Because all the cool motorcycle guys wear, we wear those, don't we? We wear patches? Yeah, we wear vests, uh, the little black ones. I store them in my beard. They're also a great beard comb. Yeah. Have you, <laughs> have you ever done that? No, so, I've watched you do it, though. Okay, well, that's cool. Well, anyway, <laughs> yeah, for those of you guys who didn't know, Horseman, I know you're watching. Matthias rides a Honda motorcycle, and he likes it. Among others, yes. Right, but the Honda's Technically, right. I don't write anything right now. They're all broken. Oh, no. Yeah. Devastating. Yeah, but the Hondas are your favorite because they're the best. <clears throat> anyway, boys, um, and both of you ladies who watch the show, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you again real soon. Take care.